this video is going to be just a little bit different because I'm a little bit tired of talking about fucking prison. What we're going to talk about tonight is a place where lots of crimes are committed all the fucking time. I like that subject. It's fun. And we're going to call this one Adventures at the Trap House. For those of you who don't know what a trap house is, a trap house is a drug conveyance. It's a house where people are either selling drugs constantly, doing drugs constantly, usually fucking both. Sometimes there's a shooting gallery where people are just all out of their fucking mind. My trap houses were just places where people could come and go and buy drugs off me or one of my runners. And I highly doubt that I have any hoity-toity, uber-rich, upper-class motherfuckers watching a scumbag like me on YouTube. So the rest of us, you guys probably already know what time it is. You guys have probably already seen plenty of motherfucking trap houses. Even if you're upper-middle class, you've probably seen them in your fucking neighborhood. People coming, going, random-ass shit in the fucking yard. People mowing their lawns at four in the morning with a pair of scissors and a headlamp on? People riding up on a bicycle, wheeling another bicycle right next to him? That one dude who shows up four or five times a day wearing three backpacks? Well, that's the weird ass shit that you see from outside. Just imagine the crazy shit happening in those bitches. So, put on something a little more comfortable, boil a nice glass of tea, pop yourself some popcorn, and let's fucking go! Look, one of the main problems that I had early on as a fucking drug dealer is I was trying to be way too fucking nice. I trusted people, I thought they would be legit, and it turns out most people who are buying drugs just, they aren't. They aren't. Most of them. Since I was doing the exact same drugs that I sold, I had too much sympathy, too much compassion, and I assumed that everybody dealt with things the same way that I did. Like they were trying to do solid business, they were trying to be honorable, they had a little bit of loyalty, and they weren't gonna fuck a motherfucker over. I learned quick though. One of my customers who was buying like decent ass fucking amounts of dope off of me got out of county jail. He had gotten busted, he went in, he got out, he had nothing, dude. Dude was on his fucking dick. They took everything from him, and he was starting from scratch, so he asked me, if I would front him an ounce of fucking dope. And me trying to be a decent person, like I fronted him so that he could get back up on top. But I straight up told this dude, man, I can't take this L right now. I cannot fucking afford it. I asked him if he wanted a front of a half ounce and he was like, bro, I need the whole zone. I got a sale right now and I'm going to come right back to you. I swear on my mom. And I knew this dude well enough to know that he really fucking loved his mom. In fact, he was back staying with his fucking mom at the moment. So when he said on his mom, I just went all soft and I fucking gave him the fucking ounce. Guess what he didn't do? He didn't come and pay me the fuck back. So I try to call this motherfucker and guess what? My phone is blocked from his fucking phone. You know how fucking infuriating that shit is? And like I said, this dude had just gotten out of jail. You know what he went to jail for? A stolen car. You know what he had been to prison twice for? Stolen fucking cars. So I did what any good Christian would do. I went and stole a car and I parked it on his mom's front fucking lawn. Did I get your attention yet, motherfucker? And the answer was no. He still didn't fucking call me back. So I did it twice more. The cop showed up the third time and were pounding on his fucking door and that's when I got the fucking call bro you gotta stop fucking doing this I said come over here and fucking pay me bitch this scumbag motherfucker had me waiting another five fucking hours at my house he said I'll be right there five hours later he finally fucking shows up and at this point I'm at my motherfucking boiling point so I go and I open the door and I let him in and as soon as he walks in I take my fucking pistol and I fucking pistol whip this dude upside his fucking head with it this was a valuable learning experience for me. See, I had never pistol whipped anyone like that before. Here's a pro tip for anyone trying to pistol whip somebody. Take your finger off the trigger if you pistol whip somebody, you guys. This thing went the fuck off and blew a fucking hole in my fucking wall, man. But it went off right next to his fucking ear and this dude was deaf for like two and a half weeks on one side of his fucking head. But not only did he pay me back that day, he never fucking called me again. It was fucking great. Not only did I get paid, but I got rid of some dead. Wait, I got rid of some dead weight. <laughs> Fuck ass bitch. Now at this point in the story, I want to be really honest about something because every time I tell this story, it fucking eats at me. My conscience gets to me. Not because I pistol whipped that motherfucker, but because I stole his neighbor's cars to park in his mom's front lawn. That was fucked up to the people whose cars I stole and it was fucked up to his poor mother. Sorry, mom. Sorry, God. So sometimes you'll have people that'll come to your fucking trap house. They'll get high and they just won't fucking leave, right? And that's kind of infuriating, but like, it's kind of part of drug culture. People get stuck in trap houses for a really long time. Days, if not weeks sometimes. But 
I had a female partner and she was fucking savage, man. She was ruthless. She was also on opioids and she would hang out a lot. She would be there for days at a time. And I kind of let her use my house to hit licks when she needed to as well. Well, she had stolen a backpack from somebody that owed her money and it had everything they fucking owned in it, including their brother's ashes, right? So these people called her finally and they were like, yo, we're going to pay you back. We need our shit back, right? So they came over to the fucking house. They ended up like paying her back and then buying some more heroin and she said i want to see you guys do some lines do some lines i'm like this is fucking weird you want to see them do lines that's creepy okay but anyway they did these decent ass lines of heroin off of my fucking counter and she's like good job kids now get out as soon as they left she started laughing uncontrollably like a fucking hyena and i was like what the fuck is really going on you're acting sus as fuck and she's like yeah well i cut their heroin with his brother's ashes the fuck fuck you did what then she actually calls them just to let them know that they snorted the dead brother i was like this is some dark fucking shit right here i don't know if i can fuck with this that's fucking that's far that's too is it too far that's really far but let's take a look at it for a second what is the fucking inherent lesson here anytime you're buying fucking narcotics or anything that you're gonna put into your body from some random fucking street person you have no idea what they put in it you could be putting literally anything into your body and now that fentanyl is so fucking prevalent and the other drugs that are coming out that are even worse than fentanyl dude you can absolutely die off of the tiniest fucking amount and you'll have no idea what you're putting in your body until it's too fucking late i've seen it a lot working in recovery don't trust street drugs ever unfortunately the game has changed so fucking much it's not a goddamn game anymore you see there used to be a margin for error you could experiment and usually people didn't fucking die usually people might get sick or whatever you know what i'm saying they might have a bad reaction they might have to go to the hospital but people were not overdosing in record numbers a hundred thousand people die in this country every year consistently over the last few years just from fucking fentanyl and the numbers grow every single fucking year I just went trap house Dr. Phil on y'all, but seriously, man, I mean it. I work in recovery and I've seen what's going on out here on the fucking streets with these drugs. So I have a disgusting amount of these trap house stories and I'm not sure if y'all are interested or not. I figured I'd dip my pinky toe in the water and see if it's warm, see if y'all like it. If you guys want more of these trap house stories, please let me know in the comments. If there's something else that you want to fucking hear, let me know in those comments, man. Please like, subscribe, all that shit that I'm supposed to say that I really hate saying. You all know what to do if you feel like fucking doing it. If you like me, make me feel special. Anyway, I appreciate y'all spending your time with me tonight. Y'all motherfuckers know what time it is. One love, be good or be good at it. Deuces.